Linear equations can be written three ways. Slope-intercept form is the y equals mx plus b, and as the name suggests, it gives us the slope and the y-intercept. General form is the fancy form that looks like this. It's equal to zero. A, b, and c are whole numbers. A is positive, and we line everything up in that order. The third form is slope point form, and as you might imagine from the name, we can use this form if we have a slope and any point on the line. It's similar to slope intercept form in that way, but with slope intercept form, this has to be the y intercept. With slope point form, we can use any point on that line and get the equation. I'm going to take a point that I know on my line, and I'm going to just call this my first x-coordinate and my first y-coordinate. So this is x1, y1. And then I'm going to use x, y to represent any point on that line. So I happen to put it here. It could be here, here, here. Any point on this line can be represented with an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. If we're trying to find the slope, we know slope is rise over run. So what's the change in y coordinates compared to the change in x coordinates? So I can find that by taking the difference between where I end up and where I start. That's going to give me the change in vertical distance represented here. And I can also do that by finding out what's the change in horizontal distance. So where did I end up on the x-axis compared to where did I start? So I'm going to take the difference between those x coordinates and that's going to give me my run algebraically rearrange this. Right now we're dividing by x minus x1, so I'm going to multiply to get that off the bottom, and then I'm going to do the same thing to keep it balanced on the other side. So that's going to give me the slope times that denominator piece equals y minus y1, and then I'm just going to rearrange my side. So I'm going to take this piece and move it to the right. I'm going to take this piece and move it to the left. And this is what we call the slope point formula. M we know represents the slope. Every linear equation has an x and a y coordinate in it. So this is just the x and the y for that equation. And this x1 and y1 refers to a specific point that I have on my line. I need to keep my brackets on this side because I'm going to distribute my slope in. Because this was a one outside of the bracket here, I don't need to have those brackets on there. Okay, so let's put everything together here. We're going to start to use all three forms of a linear equation. We need two pieces of information always. So in this case, we have piece one, they give us the slope, piece two, they give us a point. Now, this point is not a y-intercept, so we cannot begin with this form. We also never start with general form. Because we can never start in general form, and we're often not going to be given the y-intercept, this slope point form is the one you're going to often begin with the most. So we're going to go y minus the y-coordinate, equals the slope times x minus the x coordinate. And then because I don't want to leave a minus times a negative, multiply those signs together to get a positive, and this is slope point form. Now we're going to take this and we're going to rearrange it into slope intercept form. So I need to isolate y by moving this 4 over. I'm going to first get rid of those brackets by distributing. All right, so we begin most of the time with our slope point form. We're going to distribute in the brackets, and we're going to combine our like terms. So now we have slope intercept form. So I know my y-intercept is at negative 10, and my slope is 2. Now, because these three equations all represent the same line, we need to have the same slope here as we have here, and it also matches the information given to us. So you're going to find there's lots of ways you can check your work here to make sure you're on the right track. Now we need to go into general form. So I'm looking at x. x is positive, so I'm going to move everything over to this side, and I'm going to line up my term. And there are no fractions or decimals that we need to eliminate, so this is the general form. Now the last thing we're going to do is create the graph, and you have a couple ways you can go about this. You can either start with this point and then use your slope, you can either start with the y-intercept and use your slope, or you can get the x and y-intercepts and connect them. All will produce the same graph. And then you're going to check. So we know if it's a positive slope, our graph should be rising to the right, so that's good. We need to pass through the point 3, negative 4, so 3, negative 4 is here, so that's good. Our y-intercept is going to be negative 10, so the graph doesn't quite go down there, but you can check, is it going to cross negative 10 on that y-axis? And if all of those things match, then chances are you've got the right information. 
We always need two pieces of information to begin. So in this case, they give us the slope and they give us a point. This is not the y-intercept because x is not zero. So I cannot begin in this form and I can never start in general form. So I'm going to begin with slope point form. So I'm gonna start with setting that up, pause the video and I'm gonna get you to see if you can go through all pieces of this and get the three different equations and the graph. All right, so we begin with y minus our y-coordinate equals the slope times x minus the x-coordinate. Minus a negative I know is going to become a positive. So there is slope point form, really easy. Now, slope intercept form, we're going to distribute the negative three into the brackets and then collect our like terms. So I'm going to distribute in that negative three and we're gonna get negative three x and then watch your signs here. A negative three times a positive two is a negative six. And then I'm going to add five to both sides, giving me a y-intercept of negative one. Now, check this on the graph. So the slope needs to be the same. It's a negative slope, so my graph needs to be falling as I move from left to right. I need to have a y-intercept of negative 1, so that's good. I need to pass through the point negative 2, 5, so that's also good. Now, to put this in general form, my x is negative, so I need to move everything over to the other side. So x comes over, switching the sign. Y is not moving. Y is on the left of the equal sign. Y stays on the left of the equal sign. We need to move over that negative one, making it a positive one. Make sure you set it equal to zero, and also make sure that you included the arrowheads on your line. And here's the final line using all three forms. So I'm gonna get you to try this as well. Remember, we never start in general form. That's the fancy form that we finish it off in. We can only start with y-intercept form if we have the y-intercept. X is not zero, so that doesn't work. Almost always, we begin with slope point form. So you pause the video and see if you can get the third one done. So we begin y minus the y-coordinate, a negative times a negative becomes a positive, equals the slope times x minus the x-coordinate, minus times a negative becomes a positive, slope point form. Now we distribute in that negative two-thirds and move all the terms over. So what I'm going to do here is I know negative two-thirds times x is just negative two-thirds x, and then we know a negative times a positive is going to give us a negative, and then we have two times six is going to be twelve, and then on the denominator you have three times one which is three. 12 divided by three gives me that four, and then I'm subtracting four from this side, subtracting four from this side. So I'm bringing over that four, which is what we're doing here. Combine your like terms together to get negative eight. So I know that my y-intercept is negative eight, and my slope is the same as the slope that we were given, which is the slope that matches here. Now, general form, I need all terms lined up with a positive x. So x is currently negative. It has to come over to this side, making it positive. Y is not moving. Y was positive. Y stays positive. 8 is coming over, so the sign is going to move. And then we have nothing left on the right-hand side. We need to equal 0 there. And then finally, we cannot have fractions or decimals in general form. So because my denominator is 3, I'm going to multiply every term by 3. That's going to cancel out my denominator there, leaving me with the numerator. And then we're going to multiply those terms together to get the formal form. Make sure you've got uh, equals 0 here. And then also check on your graph. If we have a negative slope, we should be falling to the right. So I started by plotting the point that I was given. We know for sure that this is right. If you make an algebraic mistake, this this potentially is not right. So I would use that as a check, but we for sure have to go through this point and then check. We're going down two over three, down two over three, or up two and three to the left. Anytime we're asked to give the equation of a linear function, we always need two pieces of information. We're going to need the slope and we're going to need a point. They may not always tell us, here's the slope, here's your point, but we can get that information from what we're given. So in this particular question, we're given two points, we're going to choose one of them, but we know we also need the slope. Can we calculate the slope given two points? Well, we know we can. We're going to use our slope formula. Oftentimes, they're going to ask you to put your final answer in general form. It is the fancy form of the equation, but it's also because originally you can choose either of these points, but when you convert it into general form, everybody will come up with the same equation. So let's start by getting the slope. 
when I go to calculate slope, I know this is 0.1 and this is 0.2 because this one is going to be further on the left. My x coordinate is lower. My change in y divided by my change in x gives me a slope of 3 halves. I can use either of these points, so it doesn't matter what you use. So if I go with the first one, I'm going to go y minus the y coordinate is equal to the slope times x minus the x coordinate. If I'm going to use this point, I'm going to go y minus the y coordinate of that point is equal to the slope times x minus the x coordinate of that point. Just don't mix them up. If we're going to use this as a point, those coordinates go into one equation. If we're going to use this as a point, those coordinates have to go into the second equation. All right, we're going to then simplify, so we're going to distribute to get rid of the brackets. We're going to move all of the terms over to one side, and then once I have it simplified, so all of my like terms are collected, then I'm going to take a look at the x. x is currently positive, so it's going to stay there. I'm going to move over the y, and then I'm going to eliminate this divided by 2. I'm going to multiply every term by 2, which means the denominators cancel on those two terms. I've got negative 2y, and 0 times anything is still 0, and I'm going to put the 0 on the right. You can see that going through the same process over here, we will get the same equation, which is why oftentimes they will ask you to give your final form in general form. Here's an example from your homework. So in this particular question, they're asking us to put our final equation in slope point form. So you could get different answers depending on what point you chose. Just be aware of that. We know we always need two pieces of information. We need a slope and we need a point. Now in this particular question, we have a graph and we can see that on the graph, the scale is going up by one on both the x and the y axis. So in this particular case, we could just count to get the slope. So I'm going to look for clear points and they've helped us out here. We can see that this is a clear point of one negative three. So that's one that we could choose, but be aware it's not the only one. However, if they do identify a point, I probably would go with that. And then looking at the graph, here is another point that we could use. So we can see it's going to have a negative slope. We're falling from left to right. So we're going down three units and we're going over two units. So I'm going to start there and then we're going to substitute into slope point form. And then in our final question, we're asked to begin in slope point form and then convert to slope intercept form. We know we need a slope and we need a point. They've given us the point and they tell us that we need to get the slope from this particular equation. So our line is going to have the same slope. I know that I can find the slope if I put it into slope intercept form. So I'm going to first of all rearrange this into y equals mx plus b to find that slope. I would encourage you to actually write down slope and point. It makes it easier to then roll the information over. So once I get this into y equals mx plus b by moving over that 3x, it's going to become a negative. I know that my m, negative 3, that's my slope. So my line is also going to have the same slope of negative 3, and we're passing through this point. I have to start in slope point form, not only because it tells me, but because that's the only way we can start given that value. So I'm going to go y minus the y y coordinate is equal to the slope times x minus the x coordinate. Minus a negative becomes a positive. And now we're going to convert that into slope intercept form. And then from there, you can algebraically rearrange the equation. We have the same slope of negative 3, and we have a y-intercept of negative 2. So our line passes through this point, and we also know we have a y-intercept here, so you can just check to see does that work. Always, when we go to set up linear equations, we need a slope and we need a point. Slope point form often is the way that we're going to begin.